another video. And what we're going to do today is we're going to take part uh, a variant on a lot of people are afraid of them. They're not that bad. Um, I cheated a little bit and uh, I've already had this part back together again so there's not going to be any surprises for me but uh, I'll try to remember all the surprises as we go through it. Surprise number one is how do you hold on to this damn thing when you take it apart? And what you really want to do is you want to build yourself a jig like this. And a jig like this, what we got going on here, I'll take it apart and see. It's all uh, just made out of crap from the hardware store. So you got to strap the metal. A nice long bolt on it. The, the, the measurements on the video. What is done? Okay, so four twenty-eight, nice long piece of rod here, and a couple of, uh, of uh, socket head screws in here. And the spacing of this coincides with the spacing on the clutch carrier. And so when it goes together, what happens is those two pins will be allowed to locate the carrier. And that's very important because when you're trying to take the, all of this off, it uh, takes a heck of a lot of effort. So what you want to do is you want to throw it together like that and a few washers on top. And then throw a nice net on top. Checker in the vice. Now you only have to fight with the part you got to unscrew, which is the fun part. So, step number one the big nut. The big nut is a lefty. So, if it's a lefty, just the direction you're turning, you get her to undo. Very easy for me because I already had this undone. You might want to take that to local garage, get them to throw the gun against it, because that's going to be darn tight. Next is to get the uh, fixed pulley, uh, the fixed cheek for the pulley off, and uh, you can put a, a strap wrench around it and really, really haul on it hard, and that'll do it. I have these uh, wonderful little clamps here. And these clamps are, uh, are uh, they're clamps to hold strapping to beams uh, in industrial warehouses where you're not allowed to drill through the hardened steel beams. And so they work out just dandy because put one on each side. And that's going to hold this little bugger pretty darn still or pretty darn tight. And so if you reef that up good and tight like this, then with minimal distortion you'll be able to put a bar across it. Twist, get it to undo. The reason why I say minimum distortion is in reality an ink finger tight like this. It takes a lot of torque to get it to move. And then once you got it undone, you find out that, yeah, there's going to be a little bit of a wow to it. Or in this case, a lot of a wow to it. I picked my rustiest one to, to do this uh, example on. So um, later on, we'll just straighten that up and put it between two plates in a vise and just give it a slight squeeze until the deviations come out. Uh, if there's any that's really hard in there, you can put a couple of washers under it and then give it another squeeze between two plates and the washers will distort that part more than the rest and it'll bend out the, the deviation. Once you've got him off, 
you're now down at the point where the movable cheek, unless it's very, very rusted, will come off. It's got to be more rusted than this one to not come off. Uh, taking the movable cheek off will get you to the guide. Now, lucky me, it's a four, four ball guide. That's a, that's a handy one to have. Most of them you'll find are only three balls. And here's our lovely little uh, bearings for the balls for the variator. They all weigh approximately 10 grams. I've had them on the scale, so I know how much they weigh. These little buggers, what we're going to do uh, is uh, we're going to throw them into evapor rust, and we're going to test out evapor rust. I'll make uh, separate pictures of that so we can just see how good evapor rust works. If you're not modifying the, the variator for a very, uh, very top or, or anything else like that, and you're just digging through her to get to the clutch, this is the next part, is there's four screws. And those four screws, uh, the holes that they're in, when, you're, when they're reef tight, the factory, then they stake one corner of it to go into a little cutout on, on the screw holes. And you'll see that when you take it apart, what I'm talking about. But the trick is to take it apart is you have to have a screwdriver blade that's tight fitting into the screws and a white blade. Even if you have to take your file to... Uh, Reprofile a tip for a screwdriver. You want that to be fitting in there good and tight because that first bit of a turn, you're fighting where they knocked it over. If you have a, an impact screwdriver, uh, that's where that comes in handy because that'll break that that uh, vice-like grip that it has on there. It's uh, it's a tight one. Anyhow, back to the matter at hand. I've already uh, had these little buggers out, so, so they're not going to put up much of a fight. Okay, well maybe this one is, but you know, one of us needs glasses. <laughs> There we are. One, two, three, four out. We'll put that in our good bags. And then back plate clutch comes off. And now you have a wave washer and a flat washer. And a wave washer and a flat washer. Don't lose those. And then your clutch arms can be removed from the carrier, and uh, you can change them if, if, if that's what you need to do, or just clean everything up, which is what this thing really, really needs, is to be cleaned up. Uh, and these guys, to reload them on there, yeah, it's the same as when you're doing brakes, is you hook the strings together, and you just... You just fold them over and then slip them onto the pins. The, the, the fit on the pins, these guys should be uh, uh, loose as heck on there without being wobbly but very, very free moving. So you want to get yourself to that point uh, when you're cleaning that up. Now we're all the way down to the carrier. Uh, there's not much else to do except to clean this butter up and. Uh, put her back together again. But that's how you take them apart.